Here is our public pricing page where you can see what a Warp Stream cluster will cost to run. First thing you'll need to figure out is your average throughput. We have it set to 100 megabytes per second here, but you can change this as you need to. Uh, we also have retention set to seven days and 256 partitions. The next thing you'll need to know is what cluster tier you want to run. We have a pretty good breakdown right down here. So you can start with a dev cluster. Uh, this will give you all the core things that you need to um, get started. Once you're ready for production, you can upgrade to Fundamentals or Pro for the uh, associated SLA you see there. Uh, this will also give you the ability to recover lost topics if something accidentally gets deleted. Um, you'll be able to save that uh, for up to 24 hours. Um, these clusters also come with a little bit better lower latency. Uh, there's a process we run on the control plane side, um, and we run that more frequently for these production clusters. So I'll go ahead and choose fundamentals here. Uh, you can also choose um, what you're comparing this against. So if you want to compare against MSK or Kinesis, you have that option here as well. Uh, from there, we can take a look at the cost breakdown. So this will show you everything you need to pay to the cloud service provider, as well as what you need to pay for the control plane. Um, so first up here, we have uh, the actual VMs that you'll need to run the agents on. Based off of throughput and retention, we'll make a recommendation of how many agents you should run and what instance type. Uh, you'll also have the, the puts and gets to talk to the object storage as well as the actual storage itself. On the control plane side, uh, we have three variables here as well. Uh, so the first one is cluster minutes. That's based off of the tier that we selected. And then you'll have writes and storage also. Uh, now, as you push more data into the cluster, the control plane has more metadata that it needs to keep up with. So that's why you see those charges there. Uh, the nice thing about those is uh, they do scale as you push more data into the cluster you'll automatically get a better rate for those two line items. Uh, now, another thing that you can do is uh, you can take advantage of other storage engines like S3 Express One Zone. Um, you can see that here with the latency breakdown. So if you hit this low latency flag, then you'll see the, the latencies have gone down here um, and you have this added charge for S3 Express bandwidth. Uh, based off of the file sizes that you're pushing into that bucket. Um, and then also a little bit more uh, on the API calls because we'll have more puts and gets to talk to the bucket more frequently. You don't usually need this, um, but it is available to you if, if you want to achieve those, those lower latencies. Um, we do this by writing to a quorum of buckets. So you still get multi-AZ um, despite using this uh, one zone um, bucket from S3. And if you scroll down here a little bit, you'll see the comparable costs to run a open source Kafka cluster, uh, along with how many brokers that would take. Here we have six brokers um, for about $1,100 a month, but the majority of your costs come from cross-AZ networking and the uh, disk storage to have triply replicated data across your Kafka cluster. So um, even in the optimal case, uh, you can turn on tiered storage here and that'll reduce your hot storage costs. Um, and you can turn on fetch from follower to reduce the uh, cost for consumers to talk to the broker. Uh, even in this ideal state for open source Kafka, um, you'll see that running a warp stream cluster is going to be the most cost-effective approach.